Hello, hello, hello. Uh, welcome to this edition of uh, AppWorks AMA. AMA. Uh, I'm Jamie Lin, uh, Chairman and Partner of AppWorks. Uh, on my left is uh, James Zhang, Co-Founder, CEO of uh, Concept Our House. Uh, we're very happy that uh, we get to have him to join our AMA today. Uh, if you're a Chinese speaker, uh, 欢迎来到这一次的, uh, AppWorks AMA. 那这次跟我们在一起的是这个 Concept Our House 的共同创办人CEO James Zhang 那他是他们 Concept Our House 是一个世界一流的这个游戏的美术的这个公司 Fortnite 包括这个 Clash of Clans 包括 NBA 2K系列 那今天非常高兴 那, 呃, Concept Our House 现在正在做一个比较大的 Pivot 那要变成一个NFT的这个游戏的开发商，而且呢，他们将参与NFT游戏的这个发行跟呃二次交易，会大大改变呃NFT整个游戏业的商业模式。There, uh, so Concept Powerhouse is uh, uh, currently pivoting into NFT uh, powerhouse, and uh, in a, uh, uh, sort of uh, going forward, uh, they're gonna uh, participate in the creation and secondary sales of uh, NFT. Arts that they uh, mint, and uh, hopefully that will uh, create better business models for the game industry as a whole, and also uh, better income for the uh, creators. So, without further ado, uh, I'll let Jim Shang uh, talk a little bit about himself before we start our AMA today. Over to you, James. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie, and appreciate AppWorks putting this together, and appreciate inviting you guys as part of our journey as our investors. So thank you. It's our honor. Um, yeah. <laughs> hey, man, great great to be here. I love the space. I love talking about metaverse, uh, NFTs, blockchains, games, art. Um, what an awesome time to be in games and NFTs. Um, my personal background, I've been in games for over 20 years now. I started at LucasArts as a concept artist for about five or six years working on Star Wars games. I founded Concept Art House about 13 years ago, grew it over the years. And uh, if you guys go to the website, conceptarthouse.com, you can see some of our projects. Um, really the mission was just to create best in class digital art. And we've been doing that. We've helped ship over a thousand games. And thank you, Jamie, for, for listing some of those games. Hearthstone, PUBG, Call of Duty Mobile. Um, but now we're going to channel all of that experience and passion into creating DeFi games, blockchain games, NFTs. So we've been on that journey for a while now. I'm also a founding partner of Blockchain Co-Investors. It's a leading fund of funds blockchain. So we've backed 25 top VCs in the blockchain space, including Pantera, Fabric, Blockchain Capital, um, Hashkey and uh, many others. Um, through that, we've invested over 300 projects with my colleagues. Um, but really today we're talking about Crypto Art House. And recently, just last week, we announced a $25 million um, raise as our Series A led by Dapper Labs, Fabric, Gala Games, Animoca Brands, and many other great investors, including Cap AppWorks. Um, so yeah, I, I love the space. Awesome, thanks, James. All right, so um, uh, that's James. Uh, we're uh, very honored to have him with us. And so for all the uh, founders that tune in, uh, here's your chance to ask us uh, anything you want. All right, here comes the first question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how do you know NFTs aren't just hype? Why is it the future? Hey, James, I think you can take it first. <laughs> oh my gosh, well, NFTs. I'm assuming that our audience has some, uh, at least some knowledge of, of cryptocurrency and blockchain and NFTs, of course, non-fungible tokens. Um, let's talk about what it is first. To me, what it is for, I'll look at it from an artist angle first. Um, you know, when I started working in games as a concept artist, um, I was working on LucasArts. I was drawing things in markers and pencils, right? Um, when I finished, here's this concept that's used for a game. But if I wanted to, I could take this physical piece of artwork and sell it. You know, if you work a Magic the Gathering, you could work on a piece of physical art and you can, you can sell it. Um, but digital art, my JPEG is as good as your JPEG. But with blockchain technology and you 
you know, if you add that to a digital piece of asset, you create uniqueness and scarcity. So for the first time, a digital artist can create different sets of work and have scarcity built in. And scarcity is what gives things value. So if you believe in value and scarcity from an artist or creator's point of view, um, that's a powerful message. And so if you're on this panel, you're probably curious about the space. If you, li if you listen to, if you're not familiar with the space, I urge you get a Twitter account, start following NFT um, persons and people who sell NFTs. You look at Clubhouse, you feel the energy. You tell me if that energy is here or not and why the energy is here. To me, the energy here is about creativity and where it meets value. Those are powerful things. I can create this thing and it's unique. And other people, if they see the value on it, I can make money from that. Wow. So for me, that core concept feels very real. So we'll see what the future holds. Um, there's a lot of other areas I could talk about. I believe we have some questions around gaming later. And I'll talk about use case around NFT experiences and gaming where that true ownership is a very powerful concept. And of course, I believe it's going to be part of our futures. Yeah, thank you, James. I think, I think it's a perfect way to describe uh, NFT and collectibles. Uh, if there's anything I want to add to that, I think um, uh, um, you can basically say the same thing about just everything, right? So if you're not, yeah. you, don't, you don't like electric cars, right? You can say electric cars are just hypes. I believe in your uh, uh, <laughs> old... Uh, traditional gasoline cars, right? Yeah, if you don't like uh, uh, painting on canvas, you can say they're they're just trash, right? I'll never pay to own anything like that, right? So I think uh, if you think about NFT, it's different from cryptocurrency in a sense that uh, cryptocurrencies are digitalization of fiat currency, right? Yeah. And it's a way for you to store value and trade. So the value store should be, should have, should have uh, uh, unanimous for everybody. So one USDT is worth one US dollar and it's the same for everybody. But if you think about NFTs, it's essentially digitalization of merchandise. And inherently people have different willingness to pay or different sort of uh, uh, will see different merchandise uh, having different intrinsic value for them, right? Um, this cup, uh, you can see it. this cup is a Starbucks cup that I brought back from New York. And it's worth a lot to me because I lived in New York for six years. And so it's, it's for me to memorize New York. But if you've never been to New York, it's probably not worth a lot to you because you don't have that affection attached to attach you. Right? So with any merchandise, I think uh, you can say the same thing for everything and so there's going to be people that love nfts and there's going to be people who would never own an nft which is perfectly okay uh, but i think uh, what we're observing is increasingly more and more people are embracing nfts as a, a way for them to uh, uh, collect things and to express themselves and to socialize with their friends uh show off their collection and everything like the backgrounds we have here so i think um, unless these people all of a sudden all lose interest in uh, NFTs, it's going to be valuable. And so, yeah, I think it's, that's the reason why it's the future. James, you have something to add? Yeah, thank you for that, Jamie. I, you know, I, I was going to save this for later on, but my friends asked me about um, NFTs. What is it? What is it? And the, the, change, the questions have changed. Um, everybody at this point knows what Bitcoin is. And I talk about NFTs, usually I start off with why cryptocurrency even exists, right? I mean, it wasn't that long ago, 10 years ago for Bitcoin. Wow. Why was Bitcoin created, right? Bitcoin, I think if, if, if you told people that nine years ago you own Bitcoin, people are like, what's that, right? Seven years ago, people may laugh at you. Five years ago, people may have been I don't know, angry about it. What do you, what do you mean? You know, how is that real money? You're going to get scammed. Um, today, if you own Bitcoin, the perception is totally different. Yeah. Right now, it's smart. When did you get into it? And now it's like you got into it early, right? Um, 
what Bitcoin to me, Bitcoin is created because of a declining confidence in the financial system. For early people, it was a different way to look at value, right? Money is the greatest form of trust that human beings have ever created. When I look at a $100 bill, you know what it is. I know what it is. The government knows what it is. Everybody, no argument, but it's a piece of paper. But if you and I transact and we believe in a different set of value and we can come to an agreement there, then maybe that's as good as money. So stay with me for a second. I'm going to equate this to NFTs. Um, so for, for people that hold Bitcoin, now it's considered a good financial investment. Right? It's totally reshaped how we look at value. NFTs are connected to that, but it's a little different. Um, if you look at Bitcoin as a way of saying, you know, I'm not sure if I trust the financial system. Here's another way we can look at trust. NFTs are something a little different. The early people that backed CryptoPunks, for people that own really high net worth NFTs, do you know why they're so valuable, those early NFTs? They show belonging. If you own a CryptoPunk or, or a Board Ape Yacht Club Ape, what does it mean? It means either one, you're a pioneer in the space. You believed in it before other people. Or two, you're willing to invest into the space. You pay $2 million for JPEG. People pay $69 million for JPEG. Why? Because they want to buy a piece of culture. This is a piece of culture. CryptoPunks was, was critical to the creati creation of Ethereum. So. That to me tells me it's like if you want to belong into the New York art collector scene, you go in there, you own a Picasso, you own a Matisse, you're going to get a lot of attention. This is a digital way. This is, this is another, it's another sign of a world becoming more digital where our virtual goods are as valuable, maybe more valuable than our physical goods. So we'll see what the future of NFTs look like. But in the beginning, those weren't worth very much. And similar to cryptocurrency, they've taken a life of its own. I, I think so. I, I would totally agree. Because uh, at the end of the day, why do we own things, right? We own things to um, get utility out of it, or we own things to feel good up, about ourselves, or That's we own things so that we can connect with our friends that share similar interests, right? And feel, belong, feel belonging within the community, right? <laughs> So uh, I can tell this story, right? So we invested in uh, this uh, game publisher in Taiwan that's called Pub Game, Pub Game and eventually they went IPO. So uh, one time the CEO was telling me, uh, he was so curious, right? They have these whales that would spend millions and millions of dollars every year on their platform. And they're curious, right? You have all this money, you could have spent it on on a, a, a Lambo or a Ferrari, why would you want to buy all this equipment in a game that doesn't have real value in real world? So he went on and go interview them. And the guy told him that I don't have friends in real world. So if I go out, go out in my Ferrari or Lambo, people saw me driving it. They feel, um, they feel jealous of me. I don't feel anything. I don't want to please them. But if in a game, I go out wearing all this great yeah. equipment and people, uh, 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 people, people uh, and, and I got people's uh, jealous eyes, I feel good about myself. I feel better about myself. So all my friends are in the game. So increasingly, I think for uh, our generation and people uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, behind us, right? Yeah. Increasingly, their, their, their friends, their social activities are going to be in games, in metaverse. And so increasingly owning things yeah. that they can identify to will be uh, in, in virt virtual things that they can identify to will be sort of more valuable to them, increasingly more valuable to them comparing to owning physical things. Right. So I, I think uh, we're just seeing the beginning of things. Yeah. This is a really unique chapter in human history. And, yeah. and I do this for almost every, every talk I give. I ask people this question. I, I ask them, oh, you don't think a JPEG is worth that much money? Why would somebody pay that much money? Well, let me ask you, for you, Jamie, what's more important to you? One, all the photos on your photo albums in your house or all the photos on your phone? 
Mm. If you have oh, to delete of course, one, yeah, of course. <laughs> for you, it's your phone, <laughs> yeah. right? For most people, that's a hard question <laughs> because, well, they're different, right? But if your photos on your phone are more important, it tells me you will have more than one foot into the digital world. Those are just JPEGs, but they're very important to you. Yeah. So it's another, so owning crypto art, digital art, it's another validation of all of our lives and this moment in history where our digital goods are as important as our physical goods, maybe more important. I know exactly what you mean. I used to play a lot of World of Warcraft. If somebody had that, you know, I was, I was a Tauren warrior. So if somebody had a Helm of Wrath, that means they finished Molten Core, which was really hard. You had to get 40 people together, defeat this super hard monster and hope that monster drops this helmet. But if people that had that helmet, oh, I was so jealous of that. If I had a chance to buy that from that per the person that owned the helmet, I would have. And now the blockchain technology gives us a chance to own that. So I think what we're talking about with NFTs, for some collectors, it's about digital prestige. Yes. The club, the, the, the tribe I surround myself with. Yes. Other people want to make money. That's okay too. Other people just want to have some fun because some of that art is really cool. You know. So I think with crypto, it's just, that's the creativity, right? You have people who want to really belong to special tribes. You have people that want to make money. You have people that just want to have some fun and own some things. And, and you are going to get some, you know, scammers and things like that. And that comes with any kind of new technology where a lot of wealth could be created. Totally agree. Yeah. All right. I, th I think we, we've uh, set up sort of the foundation of uh, our views on NFT. Uh, we can go on to the next question. All right. Next question. Uh, what's the most important thing you look for when evaluating uh, success or failure of an NFT project? So, so, so how do you know which NFT project you would, wow. uh, you would okay. back? <laughs> um, interesting. I, I guess uh, that question is probably directed more on the B2B side. Um, uh, I, well, so, so if you want to just talk about monetary value, then I would encourage people who aren't familiar with this space to look at CryptoSlam or look at DAP Radar and just look at what the top uh, projects are. You're going to see a few common themes. You're going to see Axie Infinity. You're going to see NBA Top Shots. You're going to see CryptoPunks, Art Blocks. Those are your top NFT projects for probably this moment in time, right? That's, you know, I would just start looking at that. Then if you're an investor or if you're a game developer, what NFT project do you want to associate yourself with? And right now, I'd say there's a few large categories, right? One is you're an artist, you have a lot of followers on Instagram. Um, uh, if, if you are starting a new company, what kind of NFT project do you want to take on? Big blockbuster, small project, is it a game or not game? I would start there. If I'm looking at um, the kind of projects Concept Art House and Crypto Art House we're looking at, we want top, we want the top projects, you know, and we want to support artists. Um, so if you look at some of my logos here, um, Frank Miller, we were looking at who, what are some of the top artists that want to participate in this digital art world, this digital revolution. And Frank Miller was up there. He's somebody that I followed when he did Sin City and, and, and I mean, he was a writer for Batman. He's the one that made Batman dark, you know, of course, most people would consider him a fairy legendary standard. So we went, we went there. And then we try to create a really authentic drop. And people who are familiar with our Frank Miller drop, you can go to frankmiller.io and see the kind of things we did, all with Frank's blessing. Um, UFC is a big brand for us. I think sports collector collectibles will be huge, you know? But these are branded IPs with followings, whether you're an artist or brand. You know, there's a ton of really successful, successful projects with people that just came up with things, like Oniforce. You know, like Mechaverse from just concept artists. You have to look at the community. So there's several ways, different ways to look at it. I would say for smaller projects, let's define that as a team core team size of 10 or less. Look at the community following. Look at follow them on Twitter. You know, see if they understand the space. You know, that should be a good indicator of where their next project is going to go. Right. Otherwise, follow the traffic, follow the eyeballs. Um, one more plug here. Um, if you're new to the space and you care about gaming and the NFT space, check out Dean Takahashi's VentureBeat, 
uh, he writes for GamesBeat and he just wrote something where he's able to connect the dots on what he sees. And he's somebody who's written for games for 25 years. He says, follow the money. So that's another way to look at it. And you as an investor know that better than anyone. You know, if if Pantera and, and A16Z back something, you know, and Fabric, it's like, you know, there's probably highly vetted project we should pay close attention to. So I would say there should be something for everybody, depending on how you want to connect into this into the NFT space. So very well said, James. Uh, if anything I have to add, I think uh, I, th I think for us, the founder or the the leading sort of the the leading uh, character of the project is very important because um, the space is still rapidly uh, evolving and. Uh, there's not going to be a plan or a roadmap that's, uh, that is going to be able to um, predict all the different changes that's going to happen. So uh, we would need to trust the sort of the, the, the project leader, the, the CEO, the co-founder to make the right decisions. So for us, uh, your, your, um, how, how determined you are to make the project successful uh, how fast you're learning, how fast you're uh, sort of uh, uh, strategizing based on uh, the different uh, uh, changes that are happening in the ecosystem. And also your execution will be uh, very important to us. So um, I think it's, and you can say the same thing about everything, <laughs> especially when you're looking at uh, uh, fast changing spaces. <laughs> totally, Jamie. It's it's all about the people, isn't it? Right? <laughs> All right. So I think I think hopefully uh, our answers uh, give you gave you some insights on that question. Shall we move on to the next question? Why are most metaverse games or game like uh, when a large portion of the world's population, if not most, don't really play games except maybe for very casual mobile games? So you're saying uh, the uh, metaverse is like uh sandbox but uh if you're talking about roblox or um or uh, uh minecraft i think i would characterize their players as game players um i don't know so maybe they're saying with a lot of new blockchain or nft uh based games it's attracting a lot of uh non sort of non non-traditional players it's it's sort of a lot of the players are new players Maybe that's a question. And any thoughts on that, James? Why are large portion of the world's population interested in metaverse games, but they don't really play games? I think that's the question. Yeah, that's the question. Um, well, arguably, Facebook is a big metaverse. You know, my wife is on Facebook, you know, she, all the time. That's where she gets her news, that's where she connects with her friends, but she doesn't really play games. Is Facebook a metaverse or not? You know, that, that word metaverse to me, as somebody who's been developing games and helping supply art for Roblox and, you know, Fortnite for so many years, it's, it's, a, very, um, it's a very powerful and overused uh, word in today's game markets. Um, John Radoff is somebody worth following, J-O-N-R-A-D-O-F-F. -F. Um, he's been writing a lot about the metaverse. He calls people that are following metaverse, metaverts, like introvert, extrovert, metaverse. So I thought it was interesting. Um, That's a good one, metaverse. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So let me just start with what metaverse is, right? Um, the word metaverse came from, of course, from Snow Crash. And Neil, so Neil Stevens is actually a client of Concert Art House. We helped him on an HBO show. I asked him his personal opinion of the metaverse. And he says, James, you know, I created the metaverse for Snow Crash and I've given it to the world. So I'm not going to personally put my opinion behind it, but I'm excited to see what the world does with it. And holy crap, everybody's running with that word now. It, so, it, so that's the whole history of it. Okay, so cinematically, the picture of metaverse and what it could be, and it's all, it's, you know, fully utilized splendor. To me, it's Ready Player One right? You put on the headset, you go into this virtual world where you can do anything you want. You go to school, you transact, you know, you can have fun, entertainment, boo, you want to be. That's the Hollywood image of metaverse. It's not that practical. And I don't, I don't think we're quite close to having that yet. 
Um, Metaverse, as it pertains to Facebook, is really charged. There's rumors that Facebook is going to re rename their company to Horizon. What a big power move, right? And, uh, you know, we probably both have a lot of friends that work at Facebook. If you've experienced Horizon, what is that like? Well, they're going for experience. Hey, you can have a, you can have a decent meeting in there. You can do your work in this metaverse. You know, I don't know how many people play Horizons for just pure entertainment value, but they're trying to make a statement. To me, the most advanced, um, the most advanced metaverse we have today is, is Roblox. I mean, look at the brands they've signed on. Look at the amount of creativity in there. And what's important is you can make money. You know, it's UGC content. You can make money. You can make games in this metaverse. I mean, go. I mean, it's the just look at the adoption cycle for that, right? As it pertains to NFTs and blockchain space, I think you have to break metaverse down to smaller chunks of what, what that universe is going to do. And there's a lot of funding behind the metaverse concept. I hear things like, I can see NFT art with my virtual headsets. I'm like, okay, um, what can you do in there? Can you dance? Can you, how much can you express yourself? Is it easy to use? Um, I'm kind of going off in the sideways, but I wanted to give real examples of what we think the metaverse is, what current examples exist, and then how maybe you can participate. I think if, uh, so to me, Decentraland and Sandbox is certainly ahead in the blockchain space, blockchain game space. But right now, I think even the founders of Sandbox would agree there's not quite enough content. We all see value in that land. It's becoming like an advertising um, for respective firms and creators, but you're not quite able to fully enjoy yourself. You know, can you really spend an hour of fun or developing things and sell things in Sandbox? Not yet. So it's lacking content. Um, anyways, I, I, may, I may be going a little too far, but I, I work with metaverses all the time. So you probably remember Second Life, right? <laughs> I love that example. That is a fantastic example. I mean, the graphics were not good for Second Life, right? But you hear about, you know, like somebody in the Midwest able to make $60,000 a year selling virtual property. That is a great example. And people don't know, Second Life to this day still generates heavy profits for where they are today. That's what a, 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 that's what a, a powerful metaverse can do. People aren't talking about it, but it's still doing well for that audience. It's like 12 yeah. years later. Yeah, so, so, so I, I think um, that uh, if you look at it from sort of a computer game perspective, then uh, you feel weird why all of a sudden all these non-computer game players are interested in a world where you can have fun. But if you look at it from, so, so I, I, I did a lot of research on, on plague and games, right? So I was always wondering why human beings love to play. Why, mm -hmm. why is it so good to play? And then uh, after I've done my research, I realized that play is a form of training yourself. So play is a form of getting yourself ready for things that can happen in uh, everyday life, especially um, sort of a, a big uh, uh, environmental changes, right? But if, if uh, uh, training is boring, then uh, animals are not going to do it, right? And if you, you're not going to do it, you're not going to get yourself ready for all of these things that can happen to you. So evolution ended up giving us this benefit of psychological uh, 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 satisfaction from play. And so that's why uh, human beings and many, many animals, if you uh, observe animals, many of uh, many animals actually love to play. So we're actually born, we're, uh, uh, since we survived, right? We're, we're actually born players, right? We love to play. And, and so why are we, aren't we not allowed to play more? Or why aren't we seeing play as this sort of bad thing your kids can do? It's because ever after uh, World War II, right? The modern education was built in a way it's, essentially a, a pre-military training, right? So uh, the countries feel that the world can get, get into World War III uh, anytime soon. So they had to put young people in a training program where uh, if the, a war happens, they can immediately draw soldier out of the school system. 
That's why they took away the play. That's why today you would ask questions like, "Oh, why would wouldn't why wouldn't why wouldn't uh, more people in the world playing?" It's I think it's the result of post World War II modern education, and that shouldn't be the case. I think human beings should be born players, and we should all have fun playing because play train ourselves. Play gets us ready uh, to for different things in the world, especially. Like we're saying, in the future, if a lot of the economic activities are going to happen in metaverse, the the better you're a player, the better you're equipped with survival skills, creator skills in the metaverse, and so the better you are to handle all the different things that can happen in the virtual world in the metaverse. So I, I think we're going to see a reversal of that sort of、uh, post post World War II sort of education system, and increasingly, I think. The world is going to encourage people to play more because you learn while you play, you you train yourself while you play. So I think it's it's great, it's great that a lot of these new、um, metaverse platforms are attracting、uh, non video game players because it's only for their benefit、uh, that they play more games and get used to the uh, virtual uh, verse. Because、uh, in the future everybody has to become、uh, metaverse, <laughs> so that's that's my take on it. <laughs> What better inspiration is there for creativity than play? Absolutely,、right? yeah. I, mean, I got into art because I wanted to play. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> I I got into programming because I wanted to build games. <laughs> I love that, Jamie. That's awesome.、Great. Awesome. All right. I hope that our answers、uh, gave you some thoughts on that. The next one will be、uh, when launching an empty project. What is the first thing you plan out? Marketing, art, or form a community around project, James?、Mm. Well, so for any NFT project, community is so huge. I mean, if, if you go on LinkedIn right now, there is just if you're new to the space, you got you want to get in, like look into the community aspect. This is blockchain is if nothing else, it's collaborative and it's about community. Um, so I would approach this in several different ways.、Um, we do have our own generative avatar project that we're. I wonder if I can show some images. I, I'll hold off a little bit.、Um, I'll go to the Frank Miller piece. Okay, so that that one in particular, we need to do what Frank wanted to do. You know, so Frank. So first of all, Frank had his choice of where he would go to for the marketplace, but he wanted specifically to work with an art-focused firm.、Um, so on that one, the community had to come later. On that one, we wanted to understand what Frank felt about Sin City and what's an authentic experience. So for him, we decided to do.、Um, I could sh- I could probably just show a little bit of work, but for him. Um, we the project came first, but not all projects come out of the same way. I will share the screen real quick. I don't think Frank would mind if I share this. Uh, um, so yeah, so this image, this image here, this is the original Sin City issue number one. We wanted to pay homage for Frank, right? That was that was Sin City cover, and so we ended up doing. <laughs> Um, Frank is already a famous artist. How can we bring his、um, what he contributed to the comic book world into our world? So he would. I don't know if you can. Can you guys see this? Yep. Yeah. So he. Gave us drawings which we would digitize. We would test out with our fan base to see if it resonated, see if Frank's legacy was told in the right story. So for his drop, it came from Frank because he knows his audience. We were just enablers of his story. For our own NFT drop, it depends, right? What does the community want? We find ourselves asking.、Um, for something like UFC, it's their brand. What do they want? They want to promote the brand, so there's some pride. But then I'll go the flip side, right? This is this is、uh, this is the audience is asking me as a 
company that's creating NFTs of a certain scale, right? If you're somebody that has a piece of artwork and you want to tell your story, you may not want to just launch with your best things. You want to see if your stories actually stick. You know, maybe I'm a huge fan of Smurfs or something, and I'm a huge, huge fan of sneakers and I want to do some Smurf sneakers. Well, before you just start spending your whole life savings on Smurf, Smurf sneaker NFTs, you probably want to test it out with the community to see how they resonate. You know, but for, for something like UFC, where 350 million fans watch UFC around the world, right? And it's sports and people love betting on sports and there's a precedent for games. So of course, we're going to go the brand first and then figure out how that plugs into the community that already exists and can build on that community, right? Um, does that answer the question? First thing, so. yeah. Art. yeah, yeah, that's, that's how I think of it. Um, you know, if you're a gamer and you're designing a game, make sure the engine works. One, one other project I talk about, this is very famous NFT circles, but that the loot project, the loot for adventures project, it's a black square with white words of magic items. And the whole caption is do what you want with it. That guy thought of, he's the, he's the creator of Vine, right? He's quite, quite famous, but he thought about this. It wasn't just a random thing. Right. He gave that to the community. You guys see what you do with it. Here's an idea. Go. What a creative way to do it. That's literally opposite of how we went about the Frank Miller drop. But there's room in this exciting industry that we're all part of for both community driven or IP celebrity driven. And there's rooms to win. There's there's many ways to lose. That's perfect. I have nothing else to that. <laughs> we can go to the next question. <laughs> cool. All right, directed to you. Who's a gaming artist that you think the world needs to know? And do you own an, an, an NFTs? I think of course, right? Uh, what collections are those? <laughs> oh, gaming artists that the world needs to know. There's so many. Um, I'll come back to that one. <laughs> um, well, I mean, gaming artists, is, uh, the space has so much for everybody. Uh, I think of, I'll come back to that one because I have so many answers for that one. Uh, NFTs I own, um, I, 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 I have personally bought from our own, anytime we do a drop, of course I'm buying, I have my Frank Millers. I own, uh, some art by Chad Knight on his nifty gateway drop. Um, I own some NFTs around, I know several from the collective, this, um, so I have an X copy probably he, X copy is probably my most famous piece that I own. Um, I own my share. I own some Olympic pins, which is the NFT project with the Olympics. Um, I thought those were cool. Um, and then I own a bunch of top shots because I'm a sports fan and because they're cool. Um, so those are some of the NFTs I own, uh, uh, and then gaming artists, that's a hard, I mean, so I'm, I, if you look, um, I can just drop off names. Uh, many of them are not quite famous, but I love their work. Uh, cause gaming NFT artists is different gaming artists as a whole. Uh, if you look at the artists that come out of Naughty Dog, um, I think about my friend, uh, Emmanuel Shui. Uh, I think about Eddie Del Rio, that these are the artists that work on Ready Player One, Matrix, Star Wars, but they're not, they're kind of in the NFT space, but they're not sure if they're going to go deeper into the NFT space. If you go deep into the NFT space, there's a ton of those guys, but their mission is different, right? Now I'm talking about Fuck Render and, uh, and Alex, uh, Alex Gray and, and uh, you know, Chad Knight being early NFT artists. There's this whole group of early guys that got into NFT art. Um then gaming artists, would you count the comic book artists? Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I know Tar McFarland is doing something around the NFT space. Um, so then that's a different group, Like right? Those are your comic book artists. Um, you have a whole group of fine artists coming out. Um, look at Damien Hurst, but he's not a gaming artist. You know, um, yeah, so that's that's a the world needs to know. Let me come back to that one. I just know a lot about artists and what they're trying to do, and uh, and I'll I'll come up with why. So thank you for that question. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, thanks, James. Uh, the next one 
will be speaking of play and education. How do you see NFTs play a role in this space? Um, play education role. When I think about what I do now, I think about the different types of jobs the NFT space is going to create. That alone is worthy. I literally thought about this other day that there could be just NFT blockchain focused schools in the future that just teach the verticals. There is such a lack of training around this space. This space is so new. This is only like if you've been doing NFTs for six months, you're like a battle scarred veteran. Like this is so new. We're all just trying to figure out almost every, let me tell you, you saw the long pause because I'm trying to think who's doing it well. I don't know. I don't think anybody is doing NFT education well because none of us have time to do education yet. It is so new. Almost every notable company, even with millions of dollars, are trying to build an airplane in mid-flight. We try to train the teams that come in into doing the right things. You can have specific verticals. I know what art training looks like, you know, but this is way bigger than just art. I mean, I'll tell you what, there's probably room for people, for artists in this space who aren't even trained artists, but if they have a big enough community, people will buy your stuff. Is that good or is that bad? Like, think about it. You have two people. One goes to art school, spends four years really honing their craft, but no community. Somebody else that calls themselves an artist spends four years building a community, has 50,000 people on Twitter. They put out a piece of garbage. Which piece gets sold? I'm telling you, the garbage is going to sell because it's all about community right now. And the artists that might be listening to this, that might anger you, but this is real. It's a popularity contest in many ways. But hopefully, if two people spend are equally talented, let's say, spend equal amount of time giving to the craft, create some great work, right? Then maybe the bigger community should do better. So this whole education thing, I mean, if I were to, how would I even go about training or, or educating somebody around NFTs? I mean, you have to learn about community. You kind of have to know about protocols and what it means to participate in this digital world. And then on top of that, you have to be tech savvy enough to, you know, to kind of know your way around minting, to collect NFTs and then to create work. There's a lot of stuff in there. Um, yeah. Um, so I, I just, I just threw a lot, I just threw a lot out there. Um, uh, but could NFTs play a part in school system education? I know what it's trying to do in the sports world. Um, it's a little different. So I have to think about that piece a little bit more. I know in the, I know in the sports world, there's a lot of talks around, um, around like ticketing and uh, how to, how to reduce piracy. Um, you know, could we, could we, could we create some sort of like DAO around reducing cyberbullying where people are rewarded tokens uh, for completing tasks, uh, completing lessons, reporting bullying for good behavior? Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure who's the leader in that space right now, but uh, that's how new the space is. Usually the thing has to be worth it for there to be the education piece added on top. You know. Cool. Um, from me, if anything, um, yeah. So, so go along uh, with uh, uh, sort of the the uh, uh, thoughts James had put forward. So uh, you can even put your uh, study records on NFT, right? And once you put it on NFT, it's it's yours, right? And um, uh, you can forever uh, sh show the right people if you absolutely need to show them uh, your study record, right? On top of that, I think one, one thing is very interesting, right? So, so uh, in the post-World World, World, uh, World II modern education system, we have taken away um, subjects that are very important but uh, somehow it got left alone. For example, economy, right? 
So uh, you don't really learn about economy and how markets work and everything uh, until very, uh, very late in your age, right? Some people don't even learn about it uh, before they enter into the society and start working, which is really bad for you, right? Because if you don't know how the economy works and ownership and everything, uh, you're it, it, and in finance and investment and everything, it, it's, it's harder for you to have a more uh, satisfying life, right? Because you can make a really bad decisions financially. And so, so with play and education, you can actually uh, uh, start uh, playing games or like uh, the Monopoly or uh, sort of many of the uh, 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 business simulation games so that you start learning about how the economy works when you're much younger. On top of that, right, if you're, uh, you start to merge those games with NFTs, so uh, create things like uh, uh, Roblox. And so people can actually mint things and actually own it and actually uh, transact with it. So you're no longer simulating commerce. You're no longer simulating economy. You're actually participating in the real economy and that'll make the learning even even uh, uh, even more real for you so you'll become a much you you'll understand how economy works even better right so I, I think it has a huge potential of making the next gen generation much more uh, well prepared for um, an adulthood or even before that where they have to manage their own finances and make smart uh, decisions on um, purchases and only things, right? So I, I think there's a huge potential there. All right, hopefully that's uh, enough uh, food for thought for you. All right, the next question will be, uh, what uses do you think NFTs will have beyond collectibles, James? Um, well, I start off so, I start off talking about sports also just reducing piracy. Like imagine if every concert you go to or every um, sports event you go to that there were tickets in the future could be NFTs. You know, if, uh, if you go to six flags and your fast pass could be NFTs. And if you have a good time, you can take a selfie and upload it onto that ticket and it becomes something you distinctly uniquely own. Your ticket is different than other tickets. Um, so it could be a form of expression. Uh, in gaming, there's a ton of potential use cases, right? Your character could be an NFT. The weapons he or she gets in a game, and if you upgrade them, is an NFT. Um, uh, you can imagine a future world, what if Fortnite was a project that's owned by the community? What could that project look like? You know, um, if there's a battle royale game where the upgraded weapon is an NFT, and the community gets to vote on what kind of weapons. Um, so in gaming, there's a, there's a ton of use cases. Um, yeah, so collectibles. Uh, currently, I, I that's the world I live in. is very much on the gaming side and the different utilities for games. Um, I think about, um, well, just spe specifically to NFTs, is, um, uh, there's a lot of like NFTs as a service, as a reward platform for um, you can imagine um, NFTs being rewards for, for something like your United miles. The more you fly, the more you're rewarded this thing um, with digital use cases around it. Um, those are the projects that we're, we're starting to see more and more of. I uh, can't agree more. I'm uh, yeah. really looking forward to to all the applications uh, James talk about. And uh, if anything, um, when I was uh, living in New York, right, my friend was buying a house and he told me that he had to spend thousands of dollars hiring a lawyer just to make sure the house's deeds are right. And mm -hmm. also he has to pr uh, purchase insurance <laughs> to make sure uh, uh, in the future, if there's some uh, dispute, uh, uh, the insurance company will compensate him if it turns out the deed is actually uh, not real. The house is actually owned by other people. Uh, it's crazy, right? So uh, even with 
a country as developed and a city as sort of advanced as uh, New York in the U.S., you still have to pay thousands of dollars and to make sure that the house you buy, the ownership record of the house you buy is accurate. And even with that, nobody's 100% certain it's accurate, right? And so I started looking into it, right? In the world, uh, human beings collectively own 270, uh, 270 trillion dollars worth of real estate. And my friend was not alone. 70% of the people live in places where they don't, there's no uh, highly trust, trustable uh, housing records. So think about it, right? If uh, we were to revamp this, right? If we, we were to move all of these records on NFT, then in the future, nobody needs to pay thousands of dollars just to look up the housing records or to ensure their deeds, right? And think about how that's gonna uh, change uh, housing ownership, how that's gonna make uh, buying a house and proving that you own a house much easier for 70% of the people in the world, right? So I think um, that's just one of the examples what NFT can do outside of collectible and uh, uh, sort of uh, virtual world applications. I think it has a lot of implication in the real world and it's, it can solve a lot of real world, pro a huge real world, uh, world problems. Think yeah. of it like a, 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 we call it a trustless distributed ledger. Yes. And trustless word is a powerful word, right? Um, I hear there's a motto in Google called don't be evil. Well, <laughs> in the world of blockchain, it's, you can't be evil. You can be evil. <laughs> the code dictates it. You know, we can see who's being evil. Therefore, it limits evilness. The idea that's that's idealistic, and so yeah, you. I love what Jamie is saying. Um, you can imagine that your future TSA passports and your global ID that allows you to travel freely in the world should be an NFT. Yes. You know, right now you have to hold on to this passport and not lose it for the sake of your life. You know, um, but our lives are converting to digital. Yes. And this could be a powerful tool in that, depending on. Well, depending on what happens in the next few years. Yeah, so I think the next 30 years for NFT is going to be so exciting. There's so many things you can do with it. All right, I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions. Uh, what do you think is in store for 2022 for blockchain? Where are the opportunities? Good my question. Goodness. <laughs> I can look at this with my um, fund to fund investor uh, hat also. Um, because we're already, you know, we, we've backed over 300 projects. Um, so on the NFT, so this is supposed to be more about NFTs. Um, so what you're seeing already, it's going to be a bloodbath for content. There are so many marketplaces and there are several dominant protocols that are warring it out right now. So I think about right now, probably the biggest marketplace for NFT is OpenSea. And if you're following the NFT space, you probably saw the FTX launch their NFT marketplace. Coinbase is launching their NFT marketplace. Binance is launching their marketplace. And that's just starters. I mean, there's Palm, there's Portion, there's Flow, um, NBA Top Shots' own marketplace. There's a lot of marketplaces. Almost in the future, maybe you'll see as many online marketplaces as you do online stores today. It's not just Amazon. Um, so I think you're going to see a ton of more marketplaces vying and competing for the top content, which is how Concept Art House wants to play. We want to be the content layer. Um, there's a lot of um, action around which protocol is going to be dominant or whether there can be interoperability between the protocols. Um, Ethereum is by far the most wallet conversions and the most widely used. And with good reason, they were the first and the largest but then you have cheaper, faster transactions um, among many other contenders, Solana, Flow, Polygonmatics, that all talk about faster transaction speeds, lower cost of minting, all of those highly relevant to NFT space. So you're going to see more pro aggressive projects across the top leading protocols. And then across games, you're going to see a lot more games, maybe not in, tw so in 2022, you're going to see a ton of games trying to be play to earn, you know, but I'll tell you, you know, Axie Infinity, man, once you create a game that's created thousands of millionaires, good luck trying to get that user base away. 
if my game helped make you a millionaire, would you, would you invest in my next game? You probably would, <laughs> right? But you're gonna see you're gonna see Axie doing more Axie things, and you're gonna see a lot of people trying to be Axie, and probably most of them aren't gonna be successful. But then you'll have a few that are gonna be totally different. And I'll tell you, two or three years from now, you are going to see AAA blockchain games. I, this I you know I'm I'm as sure of anything about this whole play to earn space. Um, so yeah, to repeat, protocols. Uh, high competition among protocols, marketplaces. You're going to see an increase in fidelity around gaming and probably NFTs as well. But NFTs is more expressive. It's a little different than gaming, where gaming requires teams of 20, 30, 40 people behaving a certain way. But NFTs, you only need three or four people to create a little NFT drop. Um, so you'll see a lot more sophistication. But I will also stress it's really, really early. Yeah, cannot agree more. Super early for NFTs. Um, still huge, huge uh, opportunities to build different types of things. I, I think it really depends on what kind of problems you're passionate about solving. Um, uh, and then, of course, uh, I think DeFi is still going to continue to grow. Uh, it's a hundred billion industry right now. I think I wouldn't be surprised by the end of next year, it becomes a 300 billion or even $500 billion industry. Um, yeah. So it's very exciting in blockchain world. I think 2022 uh, is not going to slow down. Hey, I've been in games for over 20 years and uh, I wake up excited every day about this space. I've never, <laughs> I mean, even relative to early days of, because we were there for the early game, like early social games, early uh, games on, on iPhone and, and app stores. I'm, I've never seen a space move quite like this. So it's very exciting. Awesome. All right. I think uh, that's all the time we have uh, for AMA with uh, James. Uh, I think uh, we got really good questions today and uh, I liked a lot of the conversation we had. Hopefully you, you do enjoy our conversation. Um, any last words for our community, James? Uh, you're, you're you, you, st you still owe them a few names on the artists. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, I will... Uh, if, if you follow AppWorks or something, I, I will, I don't know if I can say just one or two. <laughs> I do. I'll come back to that. Um, I appreciate the support and community. I would love to get to know your community a little better. Thanks to everybody for, for tuning in. Very much appreciate you. And we'll, we'll see you in the metaverse. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, James. And thanks everybody for uh, tuning in. Uh, uh, AppWorks 24 application uh, is online. Uh, if you're interested, uh, uh, it's going to come online uh, this week. And if you're interested in uh, applying to our next batch, uh, do uh, follow us. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll get to read your application uh, very soon. All right. Thank you, James. Uh, bye, everyone. See you next time.